The Arizona desert is making for some unusual bedfellows. 700,000 acres of land just south and west of Phoenix could soon be declared by Congress as new national conservation or wilderness areas. It's called the Sonoran Desert Heritage Plan, supported by a wide assortment of people who could sometimes be at odds, but are finding common ground over protecting this unique desert. When people hear the term desert, they think there's nothing there, it's deserted. And the Sonoran Desert completely puts that myth to rest. I'm a little noisy when I hike, I probably smell, and the animals don't come around usually when I'm out. So we haven't seen much wildlife today, but there's wildlife living right here. Mike Quigley has to play a little Sonoran candid camera to actually see the animals. This is one of seven cameras he has set up deep in the desert. It's quietly watched over the landscape for five months, capturing images of whatever happened to wander by. These cameras are motion sensored. They also function at night. So we get to see what other species are sharing this land with us. Back at his computer, Quigley wades through hundreds of images. Today is a good day, ring-tailed cats and some javelina. And he also has several shots of something people rarely see here, desert bighorn sheep. I think probably bighorn sheep are the iconic mammal species here. Quigley says as roads and power lines creep further into the Sonoran Desert, navigating around them becomes challenging for animals. And protecting this undisturbed habitat is critical. For large species like bighorn sheep that need to move great distances to find food, to get to water sources, to find mates, and to avoid certain areas when wildfires or other natural disasters occur. And preserving the, this intactness, this uh, almost 700,000 acres of high quality habitat for them, I think is probably one of the single best things that we can do to assure that species survival. I ask the people in my church, where do you feel closest to God? And they don't say, listening to your sermons. They say, out in the desert. Pastor Doug Bland knows you can't bring the mountain to the children, so he's bringing the children out to the mountain. Look, Look it, there it is. And we're gonna do a game called the camera game. In this case, and, uh, it's Saddle Mountain, one of, one of the areas proposed for wilderness protection. Bland has brought some children from his church to see this landscape like they've never seen it before, thanks to a little game he's created. One person is the camera, and the other person is the photographer. And you as a photographer get to take this camera to some spot to capture an image of the desert. And uh, you tap the camera one time on their shoulder, and they open their closed eyes just for two or three seconds, and then you tap them on the shoulder again, and they close their eyes, and uh, then that exposure is uh, imprinted in our imaginations. It turns out to be a powerful way to learn about the desert. It was amazing to me because it's like you see that mountain and then you realize that God created this. Some of those images stay with them for years afterwards. They can still see that picture in their mind. Unfortunately, the pictures they see are not always pretty. There's garbage around there. This part of the desert is riddled with litter. Bland believes wilderness protection for Saddle Mountain will get it cleaned up and ensure that it stays that way. We want uh, this place to be uh, protected for future generations, for our children and our grandchildren and their children. Um, so it'll be here for a long time. A person can visit here and find solitude. Uh, they can find all sorts of uh, wild animals and a lot of archaeology in this area. The sun has dropped behind the hills near Gila Bend which means Roy and Ella Pierpoint's guests will be arriving shortly. These deer, coming from the hills just behind their wheat farm, drop by every afternoon like clockwork to do a little grazing. And the Pierpoints don't mind at all. It just gives me great pleasure that 
that something is out there wild and, and they do their own thing and we do our own thing. Roy and Ella call the desert home and feel a strong connection to it, especially to its history. This is an area called Red Rock Canyon and its walls are lined with centuries old petroglyphs. I've never seen one like that before. Roy, look at this one. The, the sun rays is really interesting the way and there's so many. Look at all the detail in that one. But there is something else engraved on these walls. As you can see here, you can have a older petroglyphs, then you have your modern graffiti on top of it, which pretty well destroys it. These older cultures are actually, you know, step fundamental stepping stones to civilization today. And this is the only record we have. And they didn't have a written language. The Pierpoints believe there are clear benefits to designating this as a wilderness area. Someone can come out here and view the petroglyphs and the cultural features a thousand years from now. And that, that's really priceless. You know, that's a heritage that we can pass on uh, to the people that come after us. It's the golden heritage of Arizona. It's very important to our state. Besides preserving our airspace, the state of Arizona is known for its desert. So to be able to preserve it is important. Luke Air Force Base sits at the edge of many of the lands proposed for protection. It provides thousands of jobs to the local economy, a $2 billion economic engine for Arizona. For the nation, it plays a more vital role. Luke Air Force Base has one purpose, and it's to train the world's greatest fighter pilots. Ron Seitz is the president of Fighter Country Partnership, an advocacy group for Luke Air Force Base and its families. He says the pilots training at Luke use the open desert airspace to practice their maneuvers. Much of it is proposed for protection. What they're preserving on the ground is preserving the airspace Luke needs to accomplish its mission. Whatever saves our airspace means Luke's going to be around a lot longer. And that makes the Sonoran Desert Heritage Plan appealing for so many. It's very easy for us to support that project. It's a, it's a really awesome collaboration. And, and we like it. I just think it's a win-win for everybody. We see the land as a place that might bring us together. We find it to be a place that unifies. Especially today when it seems like every time you turn on the news, it's about division in society. And wilderness really is our common ground. We want our children and our grandchildren to see this and to show how beautiful the desert is.